Okay. We made it through October. In October. October was German month. So hopefully you all should have learned how to play a German song. So Maybe next year. In November, we're going to celebrate Panamanian Independence Day. And more than likely, we'll be celebrating it at the Gilmore Center on the 4th of November. That's not totally approved as tentative, but we'll have a Panamanian party. We did the same thing last year in music and dance. So what I thought I'd do today is go over some stuff getting ready for that. So the first thing you've got there is one of the most popular Panamanian songs, at least when I was there, in the 70s called El Tambor de Alegría, The Drums of Happiness. <clears throat> Panama, like a lot of countries, for whatever reason, do not publish their music. They go by what they call playing by ear, or training father to son, uncles, and so on. Relatively slow method. So, for example, in the United States, we teach the kids to sight read in school, um, and so on. And, and what we're teaching here is both sight reading and ear training, okay? Or muscle training, whichever you want to call it. These are the books that I got when I was in Panama. This was written by Dr. Zalarte. He was back then in the 70s, he was the leading expert on Panamanian folk music and dance. And his wife was the leading expert on the dress of the, of the, the folk dress of the male and female. She wrote a book on that. He wrote a book on tambor. You can't buy this anymore, it's not a drums and sokovan. Sokovan is a instrument. Here's the other uh, book. I've got a fair amount of music of uh, what, what I could find in five years down there. Uh, this is a book that's got a lot of the folk songs in, like we have for our bluegrass here and so on. Uh, it's got some of the most popular songs. Uh, so. What you have there is right out of this book. The same gentleman did this and sold it uh, via España, number 16. Yeah. So anyway, it's, it's a song, and that's what I gave you a copy of, and the lyrics course, yeah. in, in uh, Spanish. So what I thought we'd do today is do two things. Break down uh, that based on the theory part of our session and based on uh, hopefully what, what we've learned up to now. The other thing that uh, I wanted to go over, we went over one time a little bit. Is how to understand string instruments and playing. have six strings, uh, the, Panama, the Mexican uh, viola has five strings, and then you go down to four string instruments, the Sokoban has four strings, so they're a little bit easier to learn, a little bit easier to play, uh, and so on. So anyway, there's very few, I couldn't find, and many of my Panamanian friends have gone down to Panama, it took me about uh, 10 years to get one somebody going down. I did buy one when I was there. And also, they cannot find any music for them. So they do have a festival in Panama once a year up in the interior, and it's a festival of the Maharada. So now, 
they're at the point where some people are putting some videos up on the YouTube. So if you want to look a little bit more, once in a while, you'll find people playing them and singing. You'll hardly ever find the sheet music to go, to go with it. So in this book, this gentleman, in my opinion, was far ahead of his times, at least in Panama. He did publish very good material uh, related to cl not classic music, but the, the theory of music he knew. He just didn't play by, by ear. So anyway, this instrument here is like a ukulele or guitar in that they usually start more or less the same way. Uh, we talked about the circle of fifths. Most of them follow the circle of fifths. He has a diagram in here of the treble staff showing what the strings are. So, and you can buy the strings anywhere in the world. Uh, doesn't matter uh, what country you buy them from. They all have to meet a certain standard uh, related to physics and math because that's the standard of it. We talked before, A is equal to 440. And that's an oscilloscope or whatever. And all over the world, that's going to be the same. So when you buy the strings, you can buy either gut strings or steel strings. So we have steel string guitars or gut. These mostly are gut. Uh, back then, uh, they didn't have a lot of, uh, uh, when he wrote the book, uh, manufacturing in Panama. So most of the uh, classical instruments came from Europe, including the violin, a lot of their violins. Old-time instruments before that time, all over Central America, not just Panama, but uh, Venezuela and, and Colombia, uh, Bolivia, uh, they made their own kind of uh, uh, guitar. So they kind of call this the guitar, and, but then they give it their name too. But they're based on a guitar. So the strings here are, anybody know the strings on a guitar?
High string is A, E, A is second string, D is third, and fourth. Okay, circle of fifths. This is going backwards. G, D, A. A circle of fifths. Every string instrument is going to follow it one way or the other. What they do is throw in an odd string here, like this one here. Many of them will have a string that's really a fourth or a a little bit different than the than the fifth. So this is Who's a that number one? Four song. E or F? E. E. That's an exit. E. This is E. A. 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 B. A. B. Guitar. B. Oh, that is A. E, B, G, D, A, B. Oh, you went from the bottom up. Okay. E, Come B. Over here. This is yeah. number one. Yeah. Number one. Did he come from the bottom up? Go yeah. up. Okay. So let's come to Major Rock. So he tells us here that string one is the E above middle C. Okay. So what we call that is E4. Hi there. Middle C is the fourth octave. One octave, two octave, three octave, four octave, say this, eight octave, 88 keys. So then the C above middle C is C5. C6, C7, C8, 88. Eight octaves. They're all the same, just give them a different number. Okay? So he tells us that is the E on the staff above middle C. Okay? Then the next one, for this tuning, there, there's different ways to tune instruments too. So what most of us learn at the beginning is what is called the standard tuning, which everybody uses. Then as you get better and better, you may use another tuning. Or if you come from another part of the world, or part of the United States, they may tune a fiddle different uh, in the mountains than they do in California. Anyway, B, the next one is B, B3, the B below metal C, okay. The next one is G, I've got to make sure I'm doing the right one, G3. The G below middle C. What you should do is have a staff going and put down these notes so you know okay. where they're at. Okay. Yeah. Use graphics as much as possible. Okay. Okay. The next one he's got is G. G four. What does that tell us? What instrument is the last? What? This one? Oh, okay. This is the Panamanian. This is the Mejorana. This oh, is. Okay. Me, me. Mejorana. Mejorana. Mm -hmm. Mejorana. The Sokovan looks almost the Sokovan looks almost like this, but it's only got four strings. Mm -hmm. E4. What my question is, what does this tell us? G3, G4. G4. Okay. They're an octave apart. C, 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 C. You got C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and so on. So it's a G, and this is a G. Look at your keyboard. Find G3. Or the G above middle C, an octave apart. And then the next one in this tuning, and they call this poor Sace. Uh, there's some question on why Sace, but based on probably six strings of guitar 
more or less. Uh, Puerto Rico actually has a dance that's like called SACE too in their folk, folk dance world. So anyway, the last one is um, D4. tough self. <laughs> yeah, it is. But, uh, again, this is where you, you build on everything that you've learned. You, know, you just don't stop there. you got to start using it. That's what we're doing, how to put it together. Did you have a question? I know, I find the key for ukulele is A, right. E, the key for the ukulele. Two, number two is E. Oh, E? Yeah. And number three is C. C? Yeah. 